Okay, so I want to go over the main differences between setting up a Zoom webinar versus a Zoom meeting and how you can leverage Zoom, which you can create a free account for when you're doing your virtual events. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can follow along through the different click motions. I would say the, the biggest thing that I see that people miss is not turning on the required registration piece, whether you're doing a webinar or meeting. You really want to check mark that, especially if you're going to broadcast this, maybe you're doing like a, a budgeting class to all of your clients in your database, and it's more like homeowner driven, or if you're doing a, you know, business development agent class, some kind of maybe B2B. And if you're not asking them to register, then one, you're not getting the email address. And then two, you're not maximizing the automation built into Zoom that will remind them. And guys, people need reminders. Because sometimes they forget, oh, I registered for that and it may be on my calendar, but they then can't find the link or whatnot. And so let's just go into those details so that you can, one, host your show every Wednesday. So hopefully you're doing that. If you look in your settings, there's an integration component that you can make sure to connect your Facebook. That way you can stream live if you'd like, or you could use StreamYard.com. But today's video is all about Zoom. Let's just dive in. I'll share my screen. Okay, so basically... When you're in your account, so I'll just hit this Zoom icon so we can start fresh. And I'm going to click my account here in the upper right hand corner. The main thing I want you to know is when you host a meeting. So here's meetings on the left. Here's webinars. You could schedule a meeting by clicking this prompt or you could schedule a webinar. So when would you use the two? Well, a meeting is when you want everybody to be able to share their videos. That doesn't mean that they will, but you will then see everybody's little square. A webinar, the video sharing is only for the host and panelists, which you can invite different panelists. That would be like if you're hosting your show every week, you would want to send them a panelist link. But that is the main difference. Do you want to be able to see everybody and everybody see each other? Or do you only want people to see the main presenters? So that's a decision that you'll have to make. Either way, how you start each meeting is the same. So again, you will just go to the left and you will choose, do I want a meeting or a webinar? Now, before you create that, I want you to scroll down and go to account management here on the on the left. But I want you to start with account settings. And I'm just going to go through just a few. I would start with go to in meeting basic. And this is where for the chat, I would make sure that everyone has the chat enabled. So not just host and panelists, but everybody. Because if you're hosting a webinar, sometimes the co-host will want to just get feedback from the audience to see what questions they have. And if you've ever been on a webinar before and they're like, oh, the chat is enabled, so you have to do Q&A. It's just a little bit more difficult to manage when you're the one presenting. So I would go ahead and make sure, again, in your account, under account management, going to account settings, and then just clicking in meeting basics here, this is where I would change it to everyone. So it says meeting chat, instead of just host and co-host, make it to everyone. The next thing that I would pay attention to is, so same thing for webinar chat, I would make sure to change to everyone. I'm gonna hit save. Whether or not you want it to auto save, I personally don't just because your files can get pretty large, but other things, so, meetings and polls. If you think that you are going to utilize the polls and quiz feature, most people don't, but if you think you will, then you would want to enable this on because the default is to have it turned off. If you want to be able to show the raised hand feature in the toolbar, that is something that some people like to have so that we can see who has a question. You would want to enable that on. Now, here is the screen share. It is really important that if you have a co-host to just ask them ahead of time, are you going to need screen sharing capabilities? So by default, I just automatically allow for all participants to be able to share their screen. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and check this. Who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? I'm, you could make that host only. I'm just going to say all. But this is where you would check that setting. So again, you want to make sure chat is enabled for all and you want to make sure screen sharing. I would just by default make it allowed by all. That way... You don't have to worry about it because there's nothing worse than when you start the meeting or webinar and the co-host is like, oh, I can't see the chat or I can't share my screen. Also, the free Zoom account, know that if you host a meeting, 
the free account, you're limited to 100 people that can register. So if for any reason you think you're going to have more than 100 people register, then you will want to increase or up your plan. For the webinar, I believe the free webinar, you have up to 500, I believe. You may want to double check that, but I, I believe that's correct. And that's probably plenty. You probably don't need anything greater than, you know, the 100 for the meeting and the 500 for the webinar. So if you want the meeting reactions, okay, you probably heard if you tune in on Fridays for the Mortgage Coach calls, they have all emojis where users, so this is toggled on by default, it's toggled off. But if you want people to be able to show those emotions, then you could there. I don't have the gesture recognition. This can sometimes be a problem. It does things that you don't always want it to do because I think like when it when it sees your hand, it could do balloons. And so I don't have that turned on. Again, webinar reactions, you can turn that on if you'd like. And that's really about it on here. Now on email notifications, see where it says webinar registration settings. You may want to go in here and just, if you want to change the questions, by default, it asks for first name and email address. So if you wanted to add additional questions, this is where you would do that here, or you could add your own custom question. In the actual webinar itself, whenever you go to actually schedule the meeting, which I'll show you in just a minute, that's where you can then choose to make it required for people to register. Other than that, on the left, if you go to advanced, again, staying on the toolbar, at the very bottom where it says integration, this is where you would connect your Facebook if you want to be able to stream live via Facebook. Okay, so now let's dive into how to schedule a meeting or a webinar. I'm just gonna do webinar for now to keep it simple. I'm gonna hit schedule webinar. You can put in whatever description you want, put in the time and the date. This is where, see where it says registration? You will wanna click this. This is how you collect the email address, the name, and then whatever else that you choose. I do not require any of these because it really creates a hassle when people go to actually log in. For video, I always check these on. I always check this for both. For options, it says Q&A. Now, if you wanted to enable a practice session, you could. I don't, but you may want to. You could also choose to automatically record the webinar. Like if you're someone that gets really nervous that you want to record, but you're worried you're going to forget once it's in the moment, then you may want to click that there. And then you would just hit schedule. If I click this button, this is the link that I would either hyperlink in an email or on an Instagram story. If you're trying to drive people to register, this is how you'll know how many people are attending. Now, the other thing, if you go to email settings here and I'm going to click edit and I'm going to do see where it says confirmation email to registrant. So I'm going to click edit. Now, I had already had these checked, but you may want to do this yourself is make sure that they get a confirmation email and to include the attachment so that they can save it to their calendar. If you wanted to change, you know, the subject line or the body, you could. Uh, that's where you would do that there. But I do recommend that you send the confirmation. Next is see where it says no reminder, no follow up, no follow up. You always want to go in and change this. So we do want a reminder email. I would say maybe the week before. I would do the hour before and the day before. But again, you choose whatever you think isn't too obnoxious. Then I would click save. There we go. If you wanted, you know, specification for those who register and don't show, you could have automation to follow up with them or those who just no showed. So this says send follow up email to attendees or send follow-up email to those who no-showed. And then from there, all you do, once it becomes the day of, you would just click start this webinar. And that's really the same process as the meetings. I'm not going to click start this webinar because I'm actually recording this video right now. I use Zoom. All I do is I, I go, in fact, I'll go back to share my screen. I host a meeting with myself. I go to Zoom and I go to host right here. And I go to with video on. That's it. And then I'm hitting record. And that allows me to also share my screen whenever I want to. So that's how I do these every week, guys. It's really that simple. So if I go to meetings, kind of the same thing. I would click schedule a meeting and you would follow the same steps. So hopefully this helps. I know with a lot of you, we have classes set up for helping people really launch their social media marketing calendar for Q4. 
If you're nervous about hosting virtual events or Zooms, all I can say is really encourage you to kind of stretch yourself, get out of that comfort zone, because this is a one-to-many strategy where maybe you want to do a, an event that's getting your finances in order or you know a new loan program that you have coming out that could be beneficial. And it's really easy to send a mass email with a registration link. And who cares if you have two people show up? You could always record these meetings and that can create micro content. So I just wanted to show some of the behind the scenes of how to set up the Zoom, also going into the main differences between a meeting and a webinar and why you should have them register and always make sure that you then go back and make sure that they uh, get the reminder emails to join. So let me know if this brings up any further questions. And as always, we'll be happy to help. Y'all have a good weekend.